have been, I'm the head of the Opinions Department in the Attorney General's Office, and I have been doing that for quite some time. You probably know that one of the things the Attorney General has to do by law is to give her official opinion to state officials. And FOIA comes into play in terms of AG opinions in only one really discrete area by law, state law, and that's these employee types of records called personnel records and evaluation records, if you've ever wanted to um, get access to those kinds of records. One of my uh, the staff attorneys in my department will be here shortly, Ray Pierce. He's going to speak for a few minutes on those AG opinions with respect to those kinds of records. And here is Ray um, as we speak. And so I'm just starting, Ray, and I'm just introduced you in, in, in about 30 minutes. Ray will talk to you about AG opinions, those kinds of records, which you probably know is an exemption under four kinds of records. I'm just going to do a general overview of the law, and in my 30 minutes with you, it's going to be kind of, a, I, want, I don't want to say a dumbed-down version, but if you've dealt with FOIA at all, either making requests, which I think is probably uh, folks in this group are mostly going to be in a position of wanting access to records or meetings, right? Um, you know, I, I speak to all sorts of groups, right? And I speak to um, officials who are in a position of enforcing FOIA and complying with FOIA, as well as members of the press and public who want access. So we've spoken to all sectors um, um, you know, about the law. So we, over the years, we've sort of developed this PowerPoint as a kind of a simple, I mean, I call this simple, simple as. The law is not a simple law. It just isn't. Um, and I've dealt with it for 25 years plus. And as an attorney, I can tell you, probably weekly, there are questions that come up that Ray and I are scratching our heads going, man, I mean, this is a new question. I cannot believe I've been at this for decades. And, you know, here's a new one. But it's a pretty lengthy law. You had a handbook here. Hopefully you've seen this before. It's in its 19th edition, I believe. <clears throat> the Press Association probably not publishes this. We, um, Ray Spear, he gets all the credit for um, the edits that go after every legislative session. We get it updated, okay? But the first part of this, if you've never noticed, is the actual text of the law. Okay, so if you really, really live and breathe by FOIA, this is a good thing to keep in your hip pocket um, because it has the actual language. And you'll see it's lengthy. It's not a short law. And unusually for state laws that our legislature enacts, there's actually an intent statement in FOIA, in our FOIA law, which, as I say, is unusual for state laws, okay, where the legislature actually wrote, this is what we intend by this law. And this concept of transparency and the act to be construed in favor of openness, that is, public access to what we call non-exempt public records, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a few minutes, and then non-exempt public meetings, the act to be construed in favor of openness for the public and exemptions, which is some of what Ray's going to be talking about, are to be narrowly construed. And that kind of comes from Arkansas Supreme Court case law, but it really starts from the language of the act, which, as I say, is unusual for the legislature to actually tell us what they intended by this law instead of us having to sort of divine what they intended by the written word, which is what I've done for 30 years is try to interpret uh, statutes. That's, that's basically my law in, in authoring um, opinions for the Attorney General's review and approval. So let's get into the simple, and I, you know, cannot overstate that it's not a simple law, but we've tried to simplify it. These three steps seems 